Hi, and welcome to another product demo. And today I want to talk about an extremely interesting new product gadget. And this particular one that I've got in front of me on the desk here is called the Mantis, M-A-N-T-I-S Q40. And the reason why it's called a Q40 is because as you can see, we've got the standard QWERTY laptop style keyboard. And you may not be able to see this in the video, but on the laptop layout keyboard, which I said it's pretty standard, we've got tactile markers on function key 4, 8, and 12, and also tactile, tactile markers, of course, on the F and the J keys. And then down the bottom right-hand side of the actual keyboard itself, we've got our traditional upside down capital T for up, down, left, and right arrow keys. And then where I've got my hands now is our 40 cell braille display. So that's where the 40 comes out of the Q, Q for QWERTY and 40 for a 40 cell braille display or 40 characters across. So from this side of the keyboard, right over to the right hand side of the keyboard, it's 40 characters wide. Now, this is probably not going to come up very well in the video, but at the front panel of the actual Mantis Q40, where I've got my thumbs here, if you like, I've got a previous button on the left-hand side and a next button on the right-hand side. If I move my thumbs further in, in the middle on the left-hand side, a little bit in from the next button, I've got a pan to the left. And then the right hand side, I've got my right hand thumb, I've got a pan to the right. So that pans the 40 cell line of the braille display electronically backwards and forwards. And then smack bang in the middle where I've got my index finger um, and the front face of the actual Mantis Q40, we've got a home button. And of course, if you're in the menus of the Mantis, that takes you back to the main menu. Or of course, if you've got it connected to a Bluetooth device, or one USB device, then that will take you out of that connection back to the Mantis menu. So that's actually very straightforward. And then on the left-hand side, again, I've got my finger on the left-hand side here. On that left-hand edge, we've got a USB port, and that's to plug in an external device such as a USB stick to access and or to save files to it. And if I tap my finger further back on the left hand side, we've got a button, which is the power on off button. Now, because I've got a silicon case on the Mantis, which actually comes with it, when the case is over that button, you can't really feel the tactile marker, but it's there, of course, if you don't have the case on. And if I come slightly further back a little bit more, I've now got a USB-C port. And of course, that does two functions that connects the Mantis Q40 to a host computer, whether it's a Windows computer or a Mac. And of course, that's where you also plug in the USB-A to USB-C charger, of course, with the adapter into a wall socket to charge the internal batteries in the actual Mantis Q40 itself. And then on the back left hand edge, I've got my hand again, we've got an SD card slot. And of course, like the USB port, you plug in an SD card and you can retrieve files and save files to an SD card. And speaking of files, you can access things like .doc, .x, .rtf, .brf, which are Braille resource files, etc. All right, let me turn the unit on. So I'm coming back to the on button on the left-hand side and I'm going to put, bring my right hand over and I'm going to feel what's happening on the brightest display when I hold that button in for about two seconds. So I'm going to count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and I've just felt the mantis go vibrated. Now I've got starting in uncontracted braille and a little emoji in braille sort of going round and round in circles. So it's a progress bar. Still says starting on the brow display. And I've got my little emoji happening quite low, like actually I've lived my finger there. And now we're at the main menu of the Mantis Q40. So on the device, it actually says 
editor and it's just switched over and said it's connected to David's work, David's Mac, David's iPad. So it's actually telling me that um, it's connected to all those three devices. My Mac that's sitting on the table, which you can't see. I've got my iPad sitting away from me from the Mantis Q40. And I'm actually recording on the iPhone that I've got the Mantis also connected to. So I know that all my connections are good. All right. So I'm going to come over to the down arrow key on the Mantis Q40 keyboard. And I'm going to press the down arrow. So my first option on the main menu is editor, which is pretty straightforward. That's for creating and saving basic documents and reading other documents. Terminal. And this option has been around for a long time. It basically means terminal screen reader. So it's using the Mantis Q40 as a quote braille slash braille screen reader to an iPhone, an iPod touch, an iPad, a Windows computer or an, an Apple Macintosh computer like a MacBook Pro, Mac Mini, etc. At the moment, as far as I understand, Android is not currently supported. So it's Samsung phones and so on. So that's terminal. Then we've got library for accessing books again. File manager, which is what it sounds like for managing your files, also deleting files and that sort of stuff. Calculator, which is pretty straightforward. It's a calculator. Date and time for date and time. Settings for setting settings for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi connectivity, and your reading and writing settings for Braille. Online services. Now at the moment here in Australia, Vision Australia Library is not currently in here at the moment. There's, let me just press enter on the keyboard. We've got Bookshare and we've got NFB Newsline. So I'm just going to press the escape key and I'm back to online services on the menu. I'm going to press my data arrow key again. User guide, which if I press enter, it would bring up the user guide. And of course, I can read it in Braille. Down arrow again, power off. Down arrow again, and I'm back around to the top of the menu for the editor. So pretty straightforward. If I pressed up or arrow, I would go back up the menu and so on. Now, if I wanted to go through that menu with the far left and the far right buttons on the front of the unit, I was going to press the far right one, which is the next button. Terminal, library, file manager. I'm going to press the one on the left. Library, terminal, editor. All right, so besides this being a standalone editor, and if you like a book reader and accessing Bookshare in particular, let's say for example, I want to connect to one of my devices. So I'm on editor, so I'm going to press my down arrow key. I'm going to hit enter on terminal. And now I've got a few more sub options here in the sub menu. I've got USB connection. I'm pressing down arrow on the keyboard. Bluetooth connection, down again. Add Bluetooth device. Back. And I'm back around to use a USB connection. So I'm going to press down arrow and I'm going to press enter on Bluetooth connection. And now here are the devices that I've previously got connected or are connected currently. So I've got David's MacBook Pro, and this course is in Braille on the bar display, pressing down arrow. David's iPad number two, because it's my second iPad, down again. David's work, which is my iPhone that I said I'm doing the recording on. So I am going to press up arrow on David's iPad and I'm going to press enter. And it says Braille display on the Braille display. Now, this should be in quick nav if you know how to use Bluetooth Braille displays or Bluetooth keyboards with voiceover, which is the screen reader for the iPhone and iPad and iPad Touch. So if I press the right arrow key by itself. 2.30 p.m. Tuesday, the 9th of February. Edit, Duck FaceTime, calendar. Photos, camera, contacts. Okay, so that's my iPad at the back here of the desk here, reading out with voiceover. So I'm using quick nav at the moment. So I'm just pressing right arrow and press left arrow. Camera, photos, calendar, FaceTime, edit, button. Okay, now I'm not going to go too much about using the terminal mode with voiceover on the iPad. Suffice it to say that it's got full keyboard support. The only thing to remember though is because this is not a true Apple keyboard, not all your standard Apple functions may work. That's point number one. Point number two, 
where you can use caps lock as an alternative voiceover command. So normally it's control and option. You can use caps lock. Now I found that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So really it's the control and option key to use all the time as a bit of a tip. Now on this keyboard, in Windows terms on the bottom left hand side here where the space bar is, if I start from the far left, we've got control, then function, then Windows, and then the Alt key. Now in iOS or iPhone or Mac terms, we've got control on the far left and the bottom, then function, then option, and then command. So because VoiceOver uses the control and option keys, then when you hold those two down, you've got one key in between them. So if I wanted to do VOK or control option K for keyboard help, tap my hand to the home row, my right hand, press control, miss the key and hold down option and press K. Starting help. To stop help, perform a four finger double tap or two finger scrub or press escape on the keyboard. And now I can press all the different keys to find out what they do. So for example, if I press control, option and L. Control L. Read line. It says read line. If I just press Control, Option, and H for Home. H, Home. That's my, as if I had an iPhone that had a Home button, or I did a, an iPhone 10 and above Home gesture. And of course, to come out of it, keyboard help, it said press the Escape key, which I'll do now. Escape, Escape, Stopping Help. Okay, so that works really, really nicely. Now, if I press my right arrow button, FaceTime, calendar. Okay, I'm still Tuesday, on the, the 9th of February, iPad reading it in Braille calendar, Tuesday, the 9th of November, for new. And I'm going to press my right panning button to get to the rest of the line, notifications. So that works really nicely. And then, of course, if I wanted to take a note back on the Mantis Q40, I'm going to press my home button. Now it says Bluetooth connection. I'm going to press home again. It says editor. I'm going to press enter on the keyboard. And that I always for myself, then I just press the shift key and wonder what was happening. <laughs> All right, now I've got create file. And I've got a little cursor here on the Braille display. So I'm going to type in the famous hello world. Now, interestingly, if I press function key F12, I've now turned on, and it actually says it on the Braille display, Braille keyboard mode. So what it does, it uses SDF and JKL as your input Braille key. So if you wanted to input in Braille rather than typing on the QWERTY keyboard, if I just type in D, A, V, I, D, this is using Braille and spacebar. And on the Braille display, I indeed have David. So, what the numbering for the fingers are is F, D in S is finger one, two, and three, or dots one, two, and three. And then dots J, K, and L, sorry, the letters J, K, and L, and then dots four, five, and six. So that's the layout, and of course the space bar is the space bar. So if I press F12 again on the minus Q40, and it says QWERTY keyboard on the Braille display, It'll, the message will go away. And I've got my line that says, hello world, David. Now, the other thing to note here too, remember when either the Mantis Q40 or where I've got it connected to at the moment, the iPad has messages that pop up. And by default, they'll stay on. I believe at the moment it's about three to five seconds. I think it's five seconds on the Mantis and about three seconds that you can change on the iPad. And they're all changeable. <coughs> Excuse me. So. I'm finished editing, so I'm going to press the home button on the front of the minus Q40. And it says editor, I'm going to press home again. And I'm back to the home screen, sorry, the home screen, the main menu of the minus Q40. I'll just press down to go to terminal. I'm going to hit enter again. Bluetooth connection, thank you very much. I'll hit enter again. David's MacBook, no thank you. Right, let's press down arrow. David's iPad 2, yes please, press enter, it says Braille display on the Braille display. I'm going to press my right arrow key on the keyboard. Photos, camera. Okay, and of course, 
I can come to the front of the mouse and just press the far right button to go to next. Contact, blog, mask, home. Okay. Six new or items. far left button for the previous. Maps. In the front of the mask here for you. Contacts. And then just in case you're wondering how to activate something, let me try pressing selected. the auto cursory button, selected. which works, works really nicely. And I just press the control key to show, trust the voice up there. Now, the way to come out of an application that I've just got into at the moment is to do that home key combination that I mentioned when I was doing the keyboard help. So that's VO or control option. Remember, I'm missing a key in the middle and pressing H. Contacts. Okay, and I'll come back to contacts. All right, so that will complete this demo. So I am going to press the home button on my Mantis Q40 at the front. Back to Bluetooth connection, pressing home button again. Editor, I'm going to press down arrow. And we've got power off. I'm going to press the enter key on power off, or I could press auto cursor in, by the way. But I'm just going to press enter. And oh, it's reminding me you have unsaved changes. Do you want to shut down the right panning button? Yes, no. And I'm back to where I started from with you have unsaved. So I'm going to use my far right button and do no and press auto cursor and to select it. So I've come down to the power off. I'm going to press enter. And it says, you have unsaved changes. Do you want to shut down right panning button anyway? Right panning button, and I've got a yes. And if I went down further, I'd have a no. But I'm going to press the auto cursor, or I could press enter on yes. And now it says, shutting down dot, dot, dot. And I'm just going to keep talking. I'll let you know when that shut down dot, dot, dot stops, so you know how long it takes to completely shut down the Mantis Q40. In the meantime, if you want any more information about the Mantis Q40, of course, please contact Vision Australia if you're in Australia on our phone number, 1300 847 496. It's just turned off now. So the whole braille display is nice and flat again. So that number again for Vision Australia is 1300 847 466. You can email the Vision Store who sells the actual Mantis Q40 on behalf of course Vision Australia and the Vision Australia Vision Store email address is visionstore at visionaustralia.org. That email address again, visionstore at visionaustralia.org and of course you can also contact Humanware who also distribute the Mantis Q40. So that will complete this demo of the Mantis Q40 basic note taker and refreshable braille display for your iOS device, i.e. iPhone, iPod Touch or iPad, Windows or Apple Mac computer. And as I say in all my other demos and podcasts, thank you for your attention and bye for now.